Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to cover the content of measuring profitability, liquidity and efficiency ratios, which is part of BTEC business level three, unit three business finance. So measuring profitability. Ratio analysis allows for the interpretation of published accounts by comparing one figure from another. Ratio analysis allows for inter-firm, so between different firms, and intra-firm, within the firm, comparisons. Ratios will be used by the internal stakeholders, such as managers and employees, as well as the external stakeholders, such as the investors and creditors. Profitability is the measure of the profit of the firm in relation to another factor. It allows for comprehensive assessment of the performance of the business by comparing one figure to another. There are four profitability ratios. Gross profit margin, markup, net profit margin, and return on capital employed. We'll now go through each one of them in detail. So gross profit margin. Gross profit margin is gross profit divided by revenue times by 100. This ratio looks at gross profit as a percentage of the sales turnover. So for every one pound that is made in sales, how much gross profit is left after the cost of the goods sold has been taken away. So for example, if the gross profit is 77%, that means for every one pound of sales that the business makes, 77p of it goes towards gross profit. Now, if the gross profit is low, then a business may need to reduce the cost of their purchases by either looking for a cheaper supplier or increasing their sales without increasing the cost of goods sold. Let's look at an example question. So use a summary account above to calculate the gross profit ratio. Again, the gross profit ratio is gross profit divided by revenue times by 100. So in this question, the gross profit is 85.000 and the revenue is 200.000. So in order to work out the gross profit ratio, we would do 85.000 divided by 200.000 times that by 100, which means that the gross profit margin that we have got is 42.5%. Markup. Now markup is gross profit divided by the cost of sales times by 100. This ratio will look at profit as a percentage of sales turnover. So it shows what percentage of the cost of sales is added in order to reach the selling price. So for example, if the markup was 27%, it would mean that the cost of raw materials used to produce the good or service was one pound and it was sold for one pound 27. Let's look at an example question for markup. So Lord of the Fries is a fish and chip shop and they sell an average of 65,000 portions of fish and chips a year. Their cost of goods sold based on this level of sales is 50,000 pound and other expenses amount to £15,000. The average price per portion is £3.50. Calculate the Lord of Fries' gross profit margin and their markup. So first, we work out the gross profit margin. Again, in order to work out the gross profit margin, we would do gross profit divided by revenue times by 100. Now, in this question, they haven't given us the revenue, so we need to work it out. So in order to work out the revenue, we do the quantity which is 65,000 portions of fish and chips times by price, which is £3.50. That will give us £227,500, which is the revenue. Now, the gross profit is sales revenue minus cost of sales. So we do £227,500 minus £50,000, and that gives us £175,500. So the gross profit margin is £175,500 divided by £227,500 times that by 100, that gives you 77.14%. Now, in order to work out the markup, we do gross profit divided by cost of sales times by 100. So as it was worked out before, the gross profit is £175,500 divided by 50,000 pounds times that by 100, which means the markup in this question is 351%.
the net profit margin. In order to work out the net profit margin, you do net profit divided by sales revenue times that by 100. Now this ratio looks at net profit as a percentage of the sales turnover. So it shows for every one pound of sales a business makes, how much of it is left as net, as net profit after all the expenses have been taken away. For example, if there was a net profit of 42%, that means for every one pound made in sales, 42p is left as net profit. Now, if the net profit margin drops, that means that a firm will have to reduce their expenses, either by cutting the staff cost or moving to a cheaper location. An example of net profit margin. So, Foul Foods is a chicken dinner label, and they have provided an extract of their statement of comprehensive income. Now, using the information provided, calculate the Fowl's food net profit margin. So the net profit margin is net profit divided by sales revenue times by 100. Now they haven't given us the net profit in this question, so we have to work out the net profit. In order to work out the net profit, you do revenue minus cost of sales minus expenses. So that's 3.5 million pound minus 1.4 million pound minus 0.9 million pound, and that gives us 1.2 million pound. Then work out the net profit margin, so we do 1.2 million pound divided by 3.5 million pound and times that by 100. So that means our net profit margin is 34.29%. Return on capital employed. Return on capital employed is net profit before interest and tax divided by the capital employed times that by 100. Now this ratio shows the percentage return a business is achieving from the money that is being used to generate the return. So for every one pound that is invested in the business from the owner's capital and the retained profit, what percent of it is actually being generated into profit? A return on capital employed of 7% means that for every one pound that is tied up in the business, 7p of it is generated into net profit. Now investors will compare the return of capital employed to the interest rates that the banks have given to see if the business is actually worth investing in or not. Looking at an example question, so Dark Secrets is a tanning salon located in Sunderland and they have provided information from their statement of financial position and comprehensive income. Now using the data provided, calculate the markup and return on capital employed for Dark Secrets. For the matter of this question, we're just going to look at return on capital employed. So to work out return on capital employed, you would do net profit before tax and interest divided by the capital employed times by 100. Now again, we don't know what the net profit is. So to work that out, we would do revenue minus cost of sales minus other expenses. So the net profit would be £330,000 minus £995,000 minus £17,000, which gives us a net profit of £218,000. Now to work out the, net, the return on capital employed, we'll do the net profit, which is £218,000 divided by the revenue which is also known as capital employed, so £323,000, times that by 100, which means a return on capital employed is 67.49%. Now looking at measuring liquidity. Liquidity ratios measure how solvent a business is, so meaning how able are they to meet their debts. There are two liquidity ratios, the current ratio and the liquidity ratio, also known as the acid test ratio. Now, current ratio. Current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities. This ratio shows the amount of current assets there are in relation to the current liabilities and is shown in a form of a ratio. So if a firm had three to one, it would mean that for every three pound that is owned in current assets, they owe one pound in current liabilities, which is acceptable. Now, however, if a firm had 0 0.7 to 1, this would mean that for every 70p that they own, one pound would be owed in current liabilities. So this would mean that the firm would not be able to meet their debts. Now, let's look at an exam question, example question. So the following information comes from the business statement of financial position of Junk and Disorderly, a specialist antiques dealer. Now use this information to work out their current ratio. 
So again, current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities. In order to work out the current assets, we need to add up the invent inventories, the trade receivables, and the cash. So that's £50,000 plus £16,000 plus £24,000. That gives us £90,000. And the current liabilities is just £61,500. So in order to work out the current ratio, we do £90,000 divided by £61,500, which means that the current ratio is £1.46 to one pound. Now the liquid capital ratio or asset test ratio. Liquid capital ratio is current assets minus inventory divided by current liabilities. Now this ratio is more of a reliable measure of a firm's liquidity. It shows the amount of current assets in relation to the current liabilities. However, it does not inc include inventory. Now that's because inventory is the hardest asset to turn into cash. Hence, this ratio does not include it. Let's look at an example question. So again, using the same data from below, but this time we're going to work out the liquid capital ratio. Now, to work out the liquid capital ratio, we need current assets minus inventory divided by current liabilities. And just like the other question, we're going to add up the inventories, trade receivables and cash, and that gives us £90,000. Then the inventory is... £50,000 and the current liability is £61,500. So the liquid capital ratio will be £90,000 minus £50,000 divided by £61,500, which means that the liquid capital ratio is £0.65 pence to £1. Measuring efficiency. The efficiency ratios tend to be used to assess how well management is controlling the key aspects of the business, such as their stock and their finances. The three efficiency ratios are the trade receivable days, trade payable days, and inventory turnover. Let's look into trade receivable days. So trade receivable days is trade receivables divided by credit sales times by 365. Now this ratio measures how long it takes on average for the debtors to pay back. The amount of time it takes the debtors to pay back will depend if the deals are with the business or the consumer. If the deal is with a business, it might take longer for them to pay them back. However, if it's a consumer, it might take less time. Now, if a business has issues with their cash flow, then they might want to try and reduce the time it takes the debtors to pay them back. An example question. Jack the Stripper is a local wood stripping business located in the south of the UK. Jack strips wood and sells it on the local manufacturers who will turn it into furniture. And he has provided his accountant with the following information from his statement of comprehensive income and financial position. Using this information, calculate the trade receivable days. So again, to work out the trade receivable days, you need to do trade receivables divided by the credit sales times by 365. So we have the trade receivables, which is £48,000. Then the credit sales, we are going to use the revenue, which is £435,000, times that by 365, and that will give you 40.28 days. Now, in a question, if you can't find the credit sales, they haven't given that to you, then use the sales or the revenue that they have given you. Trade payable days. Trade payable days is trade payables divided by credit purchases times by 365. This ratio measures how long it takes a business to pay for the goods and services that they bought on credit. If a business has cash flow, cash flow problems, then they will try and increase the period of time that will take them to pay back the creditors. Now let's look at an exam question. So looking at the same data from the question before, now we're just going to work out what the trade payables are, trade payable days are. So for trade payable days, we're going to do trade payables divided by credit purchases times by 365. So in this question, the trade payables are £65,000 and the credit purchases are £203,000. Now, if you cannot find credit purchases, then you can either use purchases or cost of sales, whatever they have given you in the statement. Times that by 365, 
which means that the trade payable days is 116.87 days. Inventory turnover. Inventory turnover is average inventory divided by cost of sales times by 365. To work out the average turnover, you do opening inventory plus closing inventory divided by two. Now this ratio will measure the average amount of time the stock is held in the business. Inventory turnover of a business will depend on the type of business. For example, a florist will have a short turnover because they have to get rid of the flowers quicker. Now look at, let's look at an exam question. So using the same data from before, again, we're now just going to work out what the inventory turnover is. So the inventory turnover days, again, is average inventory divided by cost of sales times by 365. So in this question, we get the inventory, which is £23,000, and divided by the cost of sales, which is £203,000, times that by 365, which gives us 41.35 days. Now, what's the limitations of these ratios? One, they are calculated based on the past data. Hence, it may not be accurate on the current performance of the business. Financial records may have been manipulated, so the data might not be accurate. And ratios indicate that there's a problem in the business, but it will not actually indicate what the cause of the business, cause of the problem is. Hopefully this video helped you understand um, ratios and how to measure profitability, liquidity and efficiency. If you like this video, then give it a like and subscribe to my channel. If you want to have regular updates on videos and resources, then follow my Instagram. And if you want short business revision clips, then follow my TikTok.